The next thing that we can do is we can look at uh, sort of the, the substitution rules for possible existence, right? So we would say, um, what? Well, let's first word this out. This would be um, if we'll say we'll say p is possible. P is possible if and only if. So the next substitution rule is the claim that p is possible if and only if what? Well, it would be the opposite of this, right? It is not something could. Possible meaning like it could exist, it could be the case, right? This thing is possible if and only if it is not necessary, it is not necessary that what? That this thing cannot exist, right? It is not necessary that this thing cannot exist. So P is possible if and only if it is not N C N C E S. It is not necessary that uh, not P is the case, right? P is possible if and only if it is not necessary that not P is the case, right? So this thing is possible if and only if what we're saying is that um, the non-existence of this thing is not necessary. It's not required, right? The non-existence of this thing is not required. That's basically what this is saying, right? So the possible existence of this thing results from, or is the same as, the possible existence of this thing is basically the same as saying that this thing's non-existence isn't mandated. Like, you cannot exist. If someone says that this, the existence of this thing isn't mandated, then I'm saying that it could exist. That's what this is saying, right? Um, so. What we've seen so far, then, to sort of just simplify these rules, are the following. We've got, so far, um, whoops, we've got so far three claims, right? You've got one, we've learned from the distribution axiom that we can distribute the necessity to the claim, um, and we can get the resulting we can get the resulting claim, right? And we explain what this is. So this is, this is an important axiom for modal logic. We then recognize that um, not only can we do that, we c but we can make sense of sort of substitution, right? We might be able to say the following, right? We might be able to say that this is necessary if and only if, if and only if, well, what? The negation of its possibility is not required. The third thing to say is that this thing is possible, right? This thing is possible if and only if the negation of its necessity is not required. Right? So that's what we have so far. So we have um, we're going to build the structure on sort of this idea of um, distribution but also um, on this idea of the ability to substitute, right? And now with that being said, we can then look into a, 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 a more profound axiom um, for, for modal logic, and we're going to use this axiom in combination with, um, with um, and I, I don't want to jump the gun, but we're going to use this axiom to make sense of more um, complex concepts when it comes to, uh, to modal logic. Okay. So let's look at the axiom M for modal logic, right? Let's say I have M for modal logic, uh, and we're going to say that, well, this axiom M makes the following claim, and it's pretty basic, right? If A is necessary, then A, right? If A is necessary, then A, and that's from my axiom M, right? So that's just a claim. That's not anything to analyze. It's not anything to sort of... Uh, um, discuss. We can word this as if uh, A is necessary, then A, or you can put if necessarily A, then A. It, you can use, you can word this however you want, and I'll, and I'll actually write it down. So you can say um, if A is necessary, necessary, if A is necessary, then A, or you can say um, if, and, if necessarily A, 
than A. Okay, so that's the axiom that I'm going to begin with. Okay, so now what I want to do is I, I need to look at some of the some of the ways in which I can iterate, right? Iter iterate meaning make sense of um, what I've written down already, right? And there's going to be there's there's a, there's a many different ways of going through this, but I'm only going to go through um, four and five, the most important of these uh, iterations, right? So th I'm going to give you an iteration um, axioms f four and five in an, an attempt to explain um, um, this 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 main axiom, and then we'll see sort of how how this unravels, um, how to make sense of it. And I, I hope I'm not going too fast. I hope that this is uh, this is accessible because that's that's the, that's the whole point. Okay, so I need to I need to think of the first right. So we'll go with this is I T E R A iteration axiom. These are the most important, and I've seen people do YouTube videos on this, but it wasn't quite accurate, so I wanted to do uh, a clarification of how it's supposed to be uh, stated, right? So, four. If I make the claim that this is the case, if uh, A is necessary, then A, well, I want to look at an iteration axiom of sort of this, this main axiom. How do I make sense of that? Well, I can make the claim that... If A is necessary, right, then, and here's where it gets a little tricky, then this. And this is where people are getting, uh, the other videos that I was watching, people were making errors because they didn't, they didn't quite understand where we're going. This is going to S4, S5, systems of simplification, but I'll explain that briefly. Right? No, or not briefly, I'll explain it, but shortly, in a little bit. Okay, if I make the claim that uh, A is necessary, then um, A is necessarily necessary, right? So this, this would be worded as a, in the following way. If A is necessary, right? If A is necessary, then A is, N-E-C-E-S-S-A-R-I-L, then A is necessarily, N-E-C-E-S-S-A-R-I-L, Okay, so this would be worded, uh, so 4 would be worded as, if A is necessary, then A is necessarily necessary, right? So if A is necessary, then A is necessarily necessary. We're going to make sense of that, that just sort of like commit that to memory, right? So the main um, modal axiom, um, if A is necessary, then A. Then we see in our iteration axiom that we can say, if A is necessary, then A is necessarily necessary. I right? just sort of commit that to memory, and then we're going to, I'll give you rules of simplification. And this is where I think, this is not where I think, this is where people lost the understanding of what the function of this is. Um, and this is, hopefully I'll clarify um, the, the proper usage of uh, sort of these ideas. All right, now we can then make the next claim. I mean, if we've made the claim that if A is necessary, then A is necessarily necessary, I should be able to make a, a subsequent claim on the possibility of the possibility of A, 